so yeah, so we kind of, you know, uh, do our best to introduce uh, new cutting edge Aboriginal art to Prince Albert area and stuff. So that's basically what IPAC does. But so anyway, I found it really interesting that these two were involved in this too. And, and it's an exhibition about animalization as far as I know. And, uh, and yeah, you picked, you, you came to the right area of town, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, um, so anyway, um, uh, let's see here, where am I going to start? So, I guess for me, um, the way that I kind of work, uh, I'm going <clears> to <throat> kind of do a bit of a slideshow here, and we're going to look at some art, and we're going to talk a little bit about the background ideas in it and stuff. Um, uh, but the one thing I'll kind of confess right now is, uh, I don't really consider myself to be a political artist, so to speak. Mm, I guess if I consider myself to be anything, it's more of a product of this great nation. So, if it gets a little bit uh, political at times, it's just the nature of the business. Of this, right? so, um, <clears throat> the one thing that I love about art is making art. I think uh, it's pretty much the one thing that I'm addicted to. Uh, not only the ideas behind it, but the actual application. And the thing that I think that I'm drawn to most in the way I work uh, is the unpredictability uh, and the odd outcomes that can come with uh, something like collage. I started many years ago uh, in photography, as a lot of people do. Um, and it kind of became one of these things where after I've done it for so long, it became very predictable. I knew what I was going to get when I was trying to make something. Uh, and then I think the same thing happened to me again once I started painting. Um, you always kind of understood with a drawing or a painting what you were striving for, what you were, the look you were trying to get and stuff. Uh, when I started doing collage, it was like a bit of a breath of fresh air for me. I, you know, you can, all of your uh, preconceived notions of what you're doing kind of get thrown out the window depending on what you're finding and when you're finding it. So sometimes I'll work very quickly um, from finish or start to finish. Sometimes uh, stuff will sit there for a while before I find the necessary pieces to finalize what it is I'm doing. And it's that uh, unpredictability is the thing that I think I love most about it. So anyway, this is actually what I did um, kind of make the jump from more traditional art to something a little bit different. This was probably one of the first things I did. Um, uh, this has a lot to do with, uh, I mean, this is a famous photograph of Gabriel Dumont. This is Gabriel's horse. Uh, this piece is called um, Deer Hunter with Gabriel's Horse, um, Rifle and Beaded Leg Straps. Uh, and the animalization that's taking place here is basically, I took an old hunting photograph of my father where he's holding these, and I just basically applied that to that. So it was a pretty simple first step in that respect. Um, <clears throat> but the thing kind of also wound up speaking towards um, uh, the, the history of my family. And I think that's the thing that I was doing in the very beginning. I wanted to make something that, um, was almost meaningless, but I totally failed in that I started making uh, work about my family, and it actually did wind up meaning something. And, and uh, so there was a, so it created a bit of a focus for me, kind of a theme uh, to work from. And that's kind of where I got my start in, in, uh, in making Métis art, so to speak. So, so my family is a mixed family, um, and, and hunting was always a big part of that. You'll see a lot of uh, hunting the hunting-esque themes within the work and stuff. Um, and <clears throat> I try to uh, speak to a little bit of, of uh, the emotional aspect of, of uh, being raised in a mixed family like that in a, in a Canadian society. So anyway, so this... I, <laughs> I like this thing. So yeah, so this is a, this is an old painting. This is it's a part drawing, part painting kind of a thing. And as you kind of see with some, okay, uh, we'll just switch gears here now. This guy, this is called Jerry. Uh, this is an older piece as well. Um, I thought this would be an interesting mix for the um, for the theme of the exhibition here. 
Uh, this is a <clears throat> basically a jerry can that I have um, animalized or indigenized even um, with the caribou hide. And the nice thing about this, uh, I wish I would have put a few more photographs on it, but you could see, it really does, when you're seeing the thing in, uh, for real, it really does have a bit of a personality to it, you know. Um, so basically, you kind of, <clears throat> what you wind up, or I think what I wind up doing when I do something like this is, is kind of stripping off the old ideas of what the object was, reconstructing something that has a bit of personality or some kind of an indi indigenous aspect to it. So. And <clears throat> when you talk about animalizing or indigenizing something, it could also go in the other direction. Uh, where you take a, something like a deer or an animal and kind of give it that um, modern day aspect to it. So here I've basically taken parts from a John Deere loader, uh, so tractor parts, that kind of thing. That, uh, so this is the kind of, a, you're kind of injecting a bit of a, a Euro notion into, a, um, into an indigenous animal. So, so that's where this guy came from. Uh, and I can't remember how long I spent. This actually came from, this was the second one I did. First one I did of this was a green one with green tractor parts and it was actually the Dunlop owns that. It was from uh, the Mind the Gap exhibition. So, and, so anyway, so that's where this whole thing came from. Uh, one day I will finish the whole series. I always wanted to do, they're the exact same deer, but I always wanted to just do it with different colored tractor parts. So I want a red one yellow one, blue one, stuff. So anyway, so this series is kind of still on the go. Uh, but I really enjoyed making this. Uh, it was kind of like making your own puzzle. I remember my daughter at the time was in her bedroom doing like a thousand piece puzzle and I was out in the living room with my scissors, just <laughs> slicing photographs apart. She comes up, takes a look at what I'm doing. She's like, good luck. I thought what I was doing was hard. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, because so this took, took a little bit. Uh, it's, it's kind of intricate, very, very picky work. But, uh, but very rewarding in the end, too. Uh, and the title of this one was called Unit 125. And <clears throat> in the going theme of the day here, uh, Blender, I thought, was an interesting thing to indigenize, uh, being that uh, Canadian society is a blended society. Uh, so it was a pretty simple, pretty easy metaphor to make. Uh, he's really quite a handsome dude, I must say so myself. So. Uh, and then we kind of just wound up just kind of going for it here. Um, I don't know what this is. It's like a fur sculpture. I call him the furry lip. So, uh, so yeah, I just took a bunch of fur one day and I just started wrapping it and playing with it and stuff. And, and it seemed like a nice little metaphor for, uh, for uh, a notion of a making individual like that so so it was a uh, basically a pedestal type statuesque thing that I found at um, a garage sale and and I wrapped them up in several different types of, uh, of fur so so a very direct um, kind of abstract kind of thing so. so these next three pieces uh, <clears throat> is where I really started thinking about the emotional aspect of, of growing up um, in uh, mixed society like we have here. This is modeled after a Paul Klee drawing. Um, uh, the Paul Klee drawing is titled uh, Two Men Meet, Each Presumes the Other to Be of Higher Rank. So to modernize this situation and kind of uh, personalize it for myself, um, <clears throat> I erected the two individuals, because uh, the Paul Klee one is their, their kind of Neanderthal, they're dragging their, <clears throat> and it's kind of like a sizing up of, of people when, uh, when people meet, so. And <clears throat> so I titled this one, Two Men Meet, Each Presumes the Other to Be of Lower Rank, or Higher Rank. Lower Rank, yeah. The Paul Klee was Higher Rank. So in that aspect, it was kind of like <clears throat> the two, um, aspects of my identity are kind of at odds with each other, you know. Um, and when you <clears throat> are kind of raised in an area that 
uh, race relations are not very good. Um, you know, there's always that fight going on. You can see it in uh, everyday life in your school and, uh, and just, you know, so. So anyway, it's a very kind of a prominent thing on my mind how we think that we're better than the other. And there's one side of me that thinks it's better than the other side too. So that's kind of where this thing came from. Um, oh. So this is a bit of a the middle piece. It's it's the actual fight. It's like a it's a bit of a struggle. Uh, it's kind of a funny story behind this one too. I was at work one day and for some reason somebody decided to take a punch at me and I used to wrestle so I kind of flipped them over. And then the big joke the next day at work was watch out for Tim or Judo Tim or something like that. So I was like worried that I would judo. So anyway, so yeah, it was kind of a kind of a funny thing. But, um, but so from two men meet to Morty I know judo to hybrid. So one thing I guess I should get in a little bit ahead of myself here. Uh, color is very significant in my work. The orange suit uh, has a few different kind of aspects to it. It's that hunting suit, it's the hunting garb, it's uh, the orange zone when you're driving on the highway, it's a, it's a danger zone. Um, so that's where the orange kind of plays in. And I also use it to represent um, that, um, the indigenous aspect of, of my identity. Uh, so that's why you see a uh, white guy fight an orange guy. So it's kind of like those two aspects of the personality that are analyzed with each other. So that's those three. So these are very old too. These things I think I did in 2006, something to that effect. So we're going to learn Me, me, Again, indigenizing or animalizing. Uh, a personality. I think the big reason why I do that is just to give it some kind of um, uh, either a, a personality or an emotion to, to, to that extent. Uh, this piece here speaks directly to, um, as it says, little secrets, uh, half breed, me, me, uh, the Canadian color celebrating Canadian tradition. Um, this one kind of speaks to the fact that we don't always want people to know who we are in that respect. I spent most of my childhood denying the fact that I was a happy and, uh, and really not wanting anyone. I just wanted to be normal. I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't want to have um, uh, anyone find out that who I really was, that I was from a mixed family, especially where I grew up, it's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a thing, right? So, so anyway, so, and it also speaks to the fact that there's a lot of people out there who have hidden the indigenous side of their family for generations, where families won't even admit to it. Um, so I found that, the <clears throat> talking to a lot of people, it's a very common, very common aspect to, uh, to make you family. And it's only really probably been within the last 15 to 20 years where people are starting to come out of the woodworks. Um, Canadian society, like I said, is a very blended society. Uh, we're continually um, uh, mixing. It's being harder to figure out who is and who is not Métis. So it's, uh, we do a, what we call self-identification now. So. Um, but at any rate, uh, this is where I started, and same thing with the last one too, where I started emulating those uh, hunting magazines. My dad loves those hunting magazines, so I was just taking these things and ripping them apart and putting them back together. And, um, and this one was actually, the, I think, the very first one I did. Yep. And I titled this one Special Report. And Deer Hunter, How To Hunting. Um, pretty straightforward, so. So it actually got a, this sort of a work speaks to the macho identity of the hunter and gatherer kind of thing, you know. So uh, hunting is uh, very big you know, with uh, Métis people and they're hitting my family as well. So. Again, <clears throat> a classic returns, age and orange. Classic returns basically kind of speaks to what I was just talking about, how, um, you know, starting to come out of the woodwork. And um, uh, so anyway, 
This one I modeled after my mom and dad. So. Um, I modeled this one after a, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of rude. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I had to do another talk one time where my parents were actually in the room, so I just skipped right over. <laughs> but, uh, but I thought it was, it was kind of funny. Uh, I modeled it after a, like a fight commercial on TV, you know? And, uh, <clears throat> and yeah, so red Indian versus some blonde chick. Uh, and I did it to just be funny and uh, kind of be an a-hole at the same time. Sometimes they're just, it's just bad, you know, there's not too much. And, uh, <clears throat> and I always like throwing a little humor in there. So this is DIY Muley, so do it yourself. And it's kind of funny too, because a lot of those American magazines, it's almost like hunting's almost like some kind of surreal thing, you know, where, where the, you know, you get guides and you gotta, you know, have somebody hold your hand to go get your deer or whatever, you know. So that whole, you know, do it yourself hunting is kind of what we, do or my father does and stuff and so yeah it was kind of funny. So anyway, so yeah, I kind of <clears throat> made the deer all intimidating and eating the man and stealing his gun and man eaters of America, you know. So so there yeah, so it kind of that DIY aspect kind of in my mind made the hunting thing very dangerous for some people. So, you know, so this is kind of where that comes. Uh, this one, <clears throat> I still fight with the title of this guy here, uh, so I kind of, future tradition. To me, it kind of makes me feel like, you know, as a modern day Métis, looking back on old church. Um, we like to think of ourselves as dynamic individuals, very progressive. Uh, we integrate into society very well. We've been doing that for hundreds of years now. Um, so when we're faced with uh, stereotypes, um, uh, uh, so yeah, so this is kind of, you know, me looking at an old stereotype in a strange way. You know, it's, I don't feel that a lot of uh, stereotypes really speak to who we are today. Um, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to say I don't know very many people who beat, but I think I do. So. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so there are traditions that are coming back, so to speak, and there are traditions that have died out. Um, and this is me just trying to make sense of what's what in that, that's in that sense. Uh, this is a very abstract, uh, and it was basically just to take those two colors and encase them into one object. So, uh, and like I said before, so the orange would be more the indigenous aspect to the personality, and the, and the uh, white would be more the European aspect. What are those objects? Sorry. They're actually pens. Pen. <laughs> it's a pen case. It's an old pen case. And uh, what did I do here? <laughs> oh yeah, I blue paint in the one, like big, like a clear big pen. <laughs> so I blue paint in the one, and then I wrap the other one up in a white, oh. in a white tape. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of. Um, that piece that uh, David Garneau had done, Half Breed, where he just wrote Half Breed on a piece of paper and he kept on trying to erase it, but he could never get it out of the paper, so it was always evident, you know? So, so that's kind of, uh, I think, what I was thinking when, when this one popped up. Custom. Probably one of my all time favorite collages. Um, and it's a piecing together of different body parts. Uh, there's my classic color scheme, and it's um, you can see that it's a basic mixture of. Ooh, I got a pointer on here too. Don't I? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I like this. Thing. Anyway, so yeah, just putting together. Uh, I took an Aboriginal uh, photograph, uh, photograph of an Aboriginal man, uh, several different magazine clippings of Caucasians, and I kind of put them all together into one. Uh, my father's hat, my daughter's eyes, so, so that's her in a nutshell. So yeah, and I like the idea of, of custom for us, you know, it's a, <clears throat> we're a mixture of uh, a lot of different uh, peoples, and uh, so in my mind, it's kind of like a custom job. <laughs> Uh, okay, this next few, um, these pieces are modeled after 
uh, old Dutch chip boxes. So it was just basically a platform to, uh, to put uh, an idea or a collage across. So this is a Canadian doppelganger. The title of this one is a genuine Canadian magazine. So in this, that sense there, not many magazines are going to talk about uh, Aboriginals as doppelgangers for so, but in a mixed Métis identity, that would be your doppelganger. So. Uh, this one is blinded by the light. Uh, oh yeah, the hunt for cannabis culture. So, <coughs> um, again. You know, you've got the my color scheme going on. You've got a very uh, broken up body, mixed individual here who is uh, hanging on for dear life, uh, trying to, <laughs> you know, in a, in a sense, just <clears throat> trying to go with the flow, right? So. Smoke that buck on opening day, the missing link. A little bit rude, but. I really liked, with this guy here, I really liked the, how I could manipulate the deer into, you know, becoming some kind of equestrian star. So. Panamera Indian this. <clears throat> um, oh geez, yeah, okay, never mind. So I had done a little bit of work around uh, with romance novels, that kind of thing. It was, uh, you'd be surprised how many Harlequin romance novels have like, you know, uh, the, the Savage and, and the, the White Girl and that kind of thing. You know, so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, and they're even ruder than I am. In here. So <laughs> some of them are really quite racy. But, uh, but yeah, so this one is kind of a, you know, um, has a bit of a superhero aspect to it, you know, um, as the Métis are flying across, stealing your women. <laughs> <laughs> the Canadian color. So this was probably the first one I did. Uh, this one actually sh went off to, um, uh, to Montreal for the painting project. Uh, it was in that catalog. So it's kind of a bit of a famous piece now. Um, and the interesting part about this was, uh, you know, the, the magazine title, of course, crossing it off with, uh, or crossing the piece with an old Dutch chip box as a bit of a platform for it. Uh, the title of this is Which Beast Shall I Admire? Uh, and again, that speaks to, you know, my own personal struggle with which beast, which part of my beast do, do I admire, you know, or do I have an issue with. Uh, the growth of British North America. British is crossed out. Somebody tried to put something else there. I think it was French or whatever. And then they crossed that out. And so it's always been a struggle about what is the dominant culture again. So, uh, part three of the Canadian ungulate. That's what I put down. <coughs> Uh, this one is a little bit rude in the fact that the title of it is Right When White. So, so it's kind of like a, almost like, like a uh, science experiment in a, in a sense. So. Uh, this is another one that was off to Montreal for the painting project. This is called The Flying Indian. Uh, how do I explain this? Uh, <clears throat> it's very cheeky, I'll give them that. There's a divide happening within the landscape. Um, and he's kind of like flying into the rescue. So it's, in a nutshell, that's kind of, it's a kind of, I guess, a protest piece, you would say. So. Uh, this is some newer work that I'm working on right now. Uh, this is Watch Out for the Big Horse. And I think this one I was just basically going for to show a bit of the chaos in, um, in uh, our, re our relations within the country. So you got planes, trains, and 
horses, automobiles, flying angels, way too many road signs. Uh, and this one for me is probably a little bit, it's just about me as an artist. It's, a, it's quite a personal thing. Um, the title on this one is Shield of Destiny. <clears throat> so you kind of got the, you, you know, he's geared up, he's got two hockey sticks and a glove. Um, it's a kind of a combination of different styles of painting um, and, and collage and I'm just really just trying to go for here and, and just give a sense that, uh, you know, as an artist I get pulled in certain directions sometimes and this is <clears throat> this is a case of me being kind of not so much fed up with, but um, realizing that I have to stick to my own guns when I'm making art, not necessarily being pulled in somebody else's direction because that's what they think I'm doing or I should be doing or something to that effect. Uh, oops. Uh, this collage piece right here <clears throat> is just basically, you know, one of those hands that you make with straws and cardboard and string and, and it, so you can actually pull on the strings and you can close this hand. So that's what it was, it, that, that's what that represents is that, uh, is that anybody can come along and, and kind of coax me into doing something for my own. Uh, this is probably the piece, um, it doesn't really have a title, <clears throat> but this is the one that started off all of the new work that you see in the gallery here. Um, my initial idea on it was to um, take these little horse bodies and, and, uh, and hybridize them. That's what they're doing with the, the mechanized deer heads here. So, so it was a bit of a, a bit of a hybrid, so to speak, is I think the initial idea on this. And the and the running, uh, to me, is a represents a little bit of a migration that people do. And this was the next one that actually came up um, when I first started this series here. I was actually meaning to add. Uh, identity to each of the bodies. The bodies are kind of twofold for me. Uh, in one aspect, they represent uh, diversity through color. Uh, the other part is sameness. Uh, we're all people, we're all humans, we all have two legs, two arms, very similar. <clears throat> so they, they kind of represent sameness and diversity at the same time. Um, And then I started adding, making the individuals and, and actually making, uh, adding different personalities. And through collage, it was very easy to do that and to come up with uh, very different, very um, unpredictable identities within each one. So, so they're all very different, you know, they all have a different color scheme going on. They have sameness to them, but they also have a very individual identity that is slapstick. That is very, I just, you know, with the removal of just about any of these and the addition of something else, it changes it entirely. That's why there were so many of these. I think I made 65 to date, and, you know, that's quite a bit. Usually, I think the going notion is uh, if you ever, how did that go? If you have a really bad art die idea, make a hundred of them. So, <laughs> So I'm not at 100 yet, but we're working on it. Yeah. But, uh, but, but I love the, the, the individual identities that these things were giving off. You know, you, you, when you're working with collage and the unpredictability of it, they became very fun, you know. And you could just keep on going with it. It was just, give me another magazine and I'll make another identity, you know. Or several, or whatever. So, so yeah, yeah, I kind of got um, obsessed with this a little bit. You can ask Heather, she's sick of these things. <laughs> she finds them, she finds them tucked in the couch. 
in your respect. <laughs> um, oh, wait, so, okay. This guy called Picture Perfect. I love Polaroids. Uh, this guy's like, kind of like the world traveler. Um, there's a Hong Kong emblem, there's a, um, there's a Paris emblem and a Aztec kind of a sphere going on there. So, so anyway, so yeah, yeah, again, a totally different identity happening with a uh, different texture, different color to the body, yet a sameness in the, in the physical aspect of, of, the, of the body. So. And this is from my last exhibition, A Day at the Races. Uh, this was the main installation. <clears throat> and this piece I call Union Royale. Uh, for me, I guess this was basically my attempt to try and figure out why we are so fascinated with Louis Riel after all these years. Um, has he how he serves us in art, um, how we drag the poor man by a noose through a gallery, you know, in, in whatever form. I've always had a little bit of an inclination and I've always, you know, done my best to stay away from the stereotyping around it and, and try, to, try to make my own, um, make my own symbols and meanings within the work and stuff. So, so this is me up here, I'm the artist. <laughs> God is doing the driving because the Métis are often uh, rigid, religiously quite zealous, so <clears throat> so we don't mind that kind of a thing. But anyway, so this is a so the artist is actually in the car taking a Polaroid of a real S character being dragged through the gallery. So, so in this sense too, you know, a, a lot of artists use real uh, as a basis or as a jumping off point. Uh, to get a, their ideas across as far as Métis identity goes. Uh, and for me, this was kind of a, just signaling to myself that, you know, that, that yes, I do try to make my own symbols and stuff, but and at the same time, so many artists are out there using the real identity to, as, a, as a vehicle for, for, for change, for, mess, for, their own, um, for their own message within the work. So this is, this is me doing my one and only attempt to use real. So I figured I'd better make it good. So anyway, so I decided to drag the poor man through a gallery. And at the same time, I'm hanging off the back of the vehicle, trying to photograph him to make another symbol for the Métis, to make another symbol for art. So that was that piece in a nutshell. And that's it. Anyway, thank you very much.